I wish I'd brought a chewing gum because I have quite a dry mouth. Oh, well. Should I? <laughs> no, I'm okay, thank you. I don't know. I feel like I keep just going, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, it was really good. It's better than saying, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it was horrific. <laughs> My name's Maisie Williams and I play Connie in A Helping Hand. Hello, I'm Joshua Mitchell and I'm the director of A Helping Hand. So we are at the pantry in Leighton Buzzard. Um, it's a really cute, quaint little cafe. Well, I mean, A Helping Hand was filmed in the cafe, nice. so that would be a good start. I don't know, like this is, might be really far-fetched. I'm using GCSE English here, right? So I'm sort of thinking greenery, it's like new beginnings. Connie and her dad, new beginning. That's what I'm going with for that. A helping hand follows Connie, um, meeting up with her estranged father uh, after years of not seeing him, uh, hoping to get some money out of him. Um, they, they arranged to meet up in a cafe, uh, the very lovely culture bakery in Tring. Um, and she sits down and she grounds herself and she gets ready to, to tackle this situation head on. Um, but the man who enters the cafe is not who she remembers. Uh, and hilarity ensues. <laughs> so my character is a university student. She's young. She's confident, but yeah, a little bit fragile. I know, I know genres are a bit cringe, um, and especially the genre of a, of a dramedy is also a bit of a cringe word. Um, but I think that was that's a good way to describe not cringe dramedy is a good way to describe uh, the film uh, it's important that it, it has heart um, but also has moments of levity um, and the main conflict is, is built around Connie uh, and her dad uh, that's, that's the tension all meeting up uh, after years of estrangement in this cafe um, but this, this situation as, as I'm sure you'll, you'll see when you watch it um, leads itself to a lot of, of comedic situations with Connie being the straight man a lot of the time and Dad played so wonderfully by Dan um, who just sells these comedic beats so well. Dan and Dom. Dan was so, so lovely. Yeah, such an incredible man. Yeah, I mean, they both just made it really easy for me. I've, I've never really done much like this. I've done some, like, theatre work and stuff but never... Um, on film, so it was nice to have sort of a kind, familiar atmosphere with them guys there. So yeah, really nice. I just have a real passion for puppetry, and and leaning more towards socks. Um, I've always thought they're they're amazing pieces of kit. Um, like, what would you do if you didn't have any? You'd have you'd have blisters. Um, so I thought it was an important opportunity to really let them shine, let them take. Um, real focus in the film and that's where the idea came from uh, and I spoke to Dan and we really really workshopped it and, and he was very much on the same page he's a big sock uh, aficionado like myself so um, yeah that, that's kind of the main driving force for the film What do I look for in a sock? Yeah um, Good ankle support good, uh, good, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like a sock with like some socks are lose elasticity over time. If That's it's got true. a quality yeah, yeah, ankle yeah. support, I quite yeah. appreciate that in a sock. Um, I'm not a trainer sock lover. I have to be honest. <laughs> what did you think when you saw this? This is um, this is the prop section of the show. Yeah. What do you think when you saw um, dad sock? Yeah. Well, I mean, as I say, good ankle support. Good right ankle there. Support. That is that is an ankle supported sock. So I've been in the industry for for three years now, um, mostly working as an AD on, on bigger jobs and it's given me such an amazing opportunity to meet amazing people and amazing creatives and see how a shoot day works that you don't get from going to university. Um, and that also comes with not having a lot of time, <laughs> as, as anyone at home who works in the industry can, can attest to. Um, but I was, around the time that I'd written A Help in Hand, I, I didn't know anyone. I, was, I came out of uni um, which was down in Kent, 
So I didn't really have a, a big creative network to, to draw from. Um, and, and I was looking around from Leighton Buzzer, where we are today, uh, and there was an, a Leighton Buzzer film group. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that, was, that was such a thing. So I went along and, and I kind of pitched the idea. Uh, and while I was there, I saw lovely Dan, who plays uh, the dad in the film. And I was like, you, you are the guy. You are who I want in this. Um, and I spoke to him and he's so enthusiastic and he loves the process of filmmaking. Um, and and we, we spoke about it and we built the character around him and he just fits so perfectly. Uh, and I was like, great, that's amazing. Then we get into Connie uh, and Connie is a very, very confident, very funny um, character. Um, and I needed someone who I knew I could rely on to, to hit all of these beats and someone who I knew I wouldn't have to think about because there's so much to think about um, when you're making a film. And if you can take pressure away from any area, like having Matt and Josh on camera, um, I know I don't have to worry about that. Um, so I was so lucky enough to get my, my lovely cousin, Maisie Williams, um, to play Connie. And uh, she absolutely smashed it. Um, and if it wasn't for, for her and Dan and um, Dom, who plays the barista, who really shines in those, those little moments, um, I think it would have been a completely different film and it wouldn't have been as successful as it has been. Um, so like, thank you to everyone out there because uh, it wouldn't have been what it is, uh, honestly, without you. So thank you. Right, what's it like being directed by Joshua? I think... Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Shocking. No, I'm joking. Um, to be honest, honestly, great to work with. I mean, there was points where I thought, with even lines in the script, I thought, that wouldn't sound right coming out of my mouth. So, and he was like, it's fine, just make it your own. And I think, yeah, in that sense, he was an absolutely incredible director, organized. Yeah, I wouldn't have, I couldn't have faulted him at all. Brilliant. Oh, what's that? Oh. That's the arm that That's I just, arm. I poked it through and then sort of taped it on the inside. <laughs> it was, do you remember when Dan was sat there and he managed to make it like make like a really disgruntled face. Yeah, scrunched in. I was so worried it was going to break because we only have one of these. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I was worried how many takes we did for that. I mean, to be fair, it's upheld well, considering. Like in the film, obviously I'm sat facing Dan, my lines, that kind of thing, or I was reading them on my own, but there was points where I had to read to a sock. And I think, yeah, that comes with its own struggles. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't have someone to bounce off of in terms of conversation, but I mean, I don't know. I think Dan did well, given the soccer motion, in all fairness. Like, oh, Dan being on the floor. That was the highlight of the whole thing. Him, he had to sort of lay on the floor with the sock puppet up onto the table. That was, that was quite something. But I, I cannot stand coffee, and there was a point where you went, OK, and... Um, you can have to sip the coffee, but don't actually sip it, just pretend, because we might have to like retake this and the smell of the coffee in itself. I'll... You'll mm. get into it. Now yeah. Now you're going to London. Yeah. That's all they I'm have. I'm going to have to be a coffee lover. I, I love a coffee. I'll, I'll have anything. What's your Cortado, go -to cappuccino, flat white. What's I the go to? I, I like a cappuccino. Mm. Um, yeah, it's nice. You're in there and you do, that's right. Just What's straight. your last meal? You're on death row, you're going to die. Cappuccino. To just, <laughs> <laughs> you know. just to speed the heart yeah, up just yeah, before the electric chair. You know. That's that's a coffee related story for this. Before we went out on one of the days, uh, everyone stayed around here. It, it was it was Matt, it was Josh Clark, it was Amar. I think it was the four of us. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wow, that's it's really lovely to have a nice morning before we shoot, um, because we had a bit of a late start. So we put a cafetiere together. Um and I don't know it it may have been me. Um I don't want to throw anyone else under the bus, so I'm going to say it was me. Uh, completely messed up the coffee ratio to person. Oh. <laughs> uh, so in the cafetiere pot, the way I always understand it, maybe this is this is why I'm going to get called out for this. I always assumed that the volume of water, if you're filling it up to the top, mm -hmm. is going to be distributed evenly per person. So mm -hmm. a scoop per person of coffee... It doesn't matter how strong it is because you're you're sharing it out more. So yeah. you're going to then top it up with water and it's just going to be like a regular coffee. Right. So there were four of us having a coffee. Maybe not, maybe there it was three of three. us. I didn't like coffee back then. So then one, two, three, filled it up, shared it around and 
it was the strongest coffee we've ever had and <laughs> we were we were shaking we were anxious. shaking the drive there was really bad uh, it was up until about lunchtime that we were just a wreck. We were an absolute coffee <laughs> anxious wreck. <laughs> the caffeine just. Um, but I'm sure someone, one of the other guys, can can confirm or deny. It, it was probably me. Um, so I just leave it to baristas. Yeah. Cappuccino. Oh, no, yeah. no more cafetiers for me. <laughs> <laughs> no more cafetiers. Are you ever confused with the other Mason girls? I do get that. Um, I look nothing like the girl. Love, bless her. Um, but name wise, I get people going, Are you are you sure? Like, are you sure? Like, she's out of, I want to say Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like, she's out of Game of Thrones. And yeah, no, I do get that a lot. And then my mum gets really frustrated. She's like, Well, I named her it first, so it doesn't count. But yeah, um, yeah, I do get that a lot. What are my favourite films? My immediate answer uh, would be the the so so clever Scott Pilgrim versus the World by the amazing Edgar Wright. Um, it's just so quick, and everything is so relevant in it. It's so tight. There isn't a moment wasted. The transitions are fast. There's a joke when it should be regular nothingness. Just any any and every second that there could be a joke, there could be a fight, there could be something going on, it's always happening. And it's the same for every Edgar Wright film. They're just so jam-packed and they're so interesting that you watch it and you think, wow, that's, that's amazing. What, a, what an amazing film. And then you watch it again and you go, I didn't see that the first time. That's even more amazing. And then you watch it again and again and again. And I've, I must have seen it kind of upwards of, of 20 times. Um, which for someone who doesn't really re-watch films or TV, that's, that's a lot. Um, and it's just endlessly quotable, um, so, so funny, and it's, it's open to, to a certain level of interpretation as well um, for a film like that, which you, you wouldn't normally get. Um, it's just it's great. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. Um, and, and don't be frightened that, like, after the first act, everyone suddenly knows Kung Fu. Just, just roll with it. I really... My, my favourite film ever would probably be one of the Monty Python films. But I, I just think they're absolutely hilarious. God, it's hard, isn't it? Because when someone asks you your favourite film, it's like every possible film goes to your head, apart from any that you enjoyed. Cursible Features. Cursible um, Features. Contractually obligated to doing them. Matt, you can't see, but Matt is, is behind the camera with a gun <laughs> pointed towards us. And I, I said to him, I don't do this unless I'm being paid for on the podcast. And he said, you have to. So we have to. Yeah. Um, any any pairings with a helping hand, starring Maisie Williams? Um, I would probably go with Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. No, why? That's what I'm why, why would you do that? Well, I mean, it's a sock, isn't it? And I just think if them two the are paired theme. together, yeah, I think that's the sort of common link. Nice. And I think with that pairing, you'd no longer have a tash. <laughs> I would the do. The sock wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a helping hand and uh, the new mutants. So obviously you star in the new mutants as well. Right. Um, so they're just two. They're just two Maisie Williams films. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what else? Uh, I, I would probably say less of a cursed one, more of just an honest one. Um, a helping hand, Citizen Kane, uh, because they're both widely regarded as some of the greatest media you can find. Mm. Um, and that's why you should go away and watch it at home. Yeah. It's that good. Take it from the person who made it and, and yeah. the person who stars in it. It's that good. You <laughs> need to go and watch it right now. Yeah, this blockbuster favourite. <laughs> blockbuster favourite. I've been Maisie Williams. Um, please go and watch A Helping Hand. Uh, I've been Joshua Mitchell. Uh, the director of A Helping Hand. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please make sure to subscribe to uh, My Spare Room and Slated on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram and, and on socials to keep up to date with uh, podcasts and shorts and showreels and all these fun bits. Uh, and, and for much, much more coming out in the future. Thank you very much. Um, sorry if I look like I'm shivering. We've dressed for the summer because we saw the sun this morning and it's very cold. <laughs>